the old palace of Patiala. Until the early part of this century, the home of the Maharajas, who ruled the largest Sikh state under the British Raj. Amrinder Singh, today's Maharaja, is equal under the law with every other citizen of India. He enjoys no special privileges. When the British went in 1947, they gave the Maharajas the option of surrendering their powers to the new government of independent India or trying to make a go of it on their own. Amarinder Singh's father led the movement to merge the Maharaja states with the new India. Virtually all the Maharajas followed his example, but most had been opposed to the independence movement. What was your father's attitude then, Amarinder, during the independence movement? Well, um, my father, as I said, was very uh, pro. My grandfather, who died in '38, uh, was a different type. That was a, that was a, that generation which was very, you know, autocratic and very, you know, uh, different type of person. But uh, my mother's family took part in the independence movement. In fact, my maternal grandfather was locked up for ten years. In independent India, Amarinder Singh fends for himself as a politician and a businessman. So this is really a hobby for you to go with your politics anyway, is it? No, it's, it's quite good um, business. I mean, we've been, we've been at it well. now for 10 years. Yes. And we have now about 52 mayors here in this station. And then yes. we've got another station where we have our yearlings. And then we've got other mayors with other stallions. So we have about 65 mayors uh, with the stud. It's, it's a business rather than a hobby. It is a business. It's a serious business. Yes. It's coming up well. We've had lots of winners, but we haven't yet won the derby. Let's hope this year, next year, one of these years. <laughs> Amarinda himself lives in a modern palace built by his father. And have you found it easy to maintain it efficiently designed? Amarinder is still surrounded by the splendours of his family's regal past. But although only five at the time of independence, he has lived his life through the rough and tumble of democratic India. He's seen the socialism that India's first Prime Minister Nehru hoped would solve the problem of chronic poverty deteriorate into the despair of a bureaucratic nightmare. Amarinda, to me, there's a sadness about the last 50 years. It all started with such great hope. India, a democracy, a great international leader. It looked as though at last India was going to come out and really play a major role in world events. And yet it's other developing countries which have gone ahead, and India which seems to have uh, lagged behind. What's gone wrong, do you think? I think primarily our problem has been um, uh, the population which has uh, kept ahead of uh, development. Uh, we are nearly a billion pe people today, so the problems are gigantic. But population is really a reflection of the failure of the government to provide adequate health and education for the poorest of the poor in this country. Why do you think it is that these basic services which were promised by socialism, promised by Nehru, haven't been given to the people? because the economy can't uh, really um, uh, handle that. But you're quite right. I mean, it's, 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 uh, um, the, the population increase is primarily economic. I mean, today, if a man thinks he has, you know, you, there's no social security, there's no old age pension, there's nothing to give them. That if I have seven or eight children, maybe one or two will look after me in my old age. That's, that's primarily the reason. And unless the government solves that, you're not going to have any impact on the population problem. The army of political workers that Amarinder Singh now commands provides his escort to a rally. They belong to the Sikh party, the Akali Dal. Amarinder is by no means the only Maharaja to be a democratic politician nowadays. But India changes gradually. Respect for Amarinder is such that his supporters still try to touch his feet. As Amarinder is escorted to the dais, he's greeted as Maharaja. Maharaja 
ਮੈਂ ਸੋਚ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੇ ਬੈਠਾ ਕਿ ਹਿੰਮਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਨਗਰ ਨੇ ਨਗਰ ਦੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੀ ਬਣ ਗਿਆ ਸਾਡਾ ਮੋਲਕ in western democracies we don't have the patience to listen to long speeches but then amarinda told me that indian democracy was different indian voters are not interested in manifestos and policies they're quite cynical they choose the candidates most likely to do something specifically for them get them a job a grant or a loan build a school in their village or a road to the bus stop protect them from the police and get officials to listen to their complaints that's why voters tend to choose candidates from their own caste or religion they believe a politician is more likely to look after his own and on the whole they're right it's not surprising therefore that it's mainly sikhs who come to listen to amrinder koi aaya pindri jithe us pind da diwana kide gudiya hoye aj phir sohne ahe jana inna logan nu thonu kehna Amrinder Singh has inherited wealth and had a good education at an Indian public school. He can afford to be incorruptible. Most Indian politicians don't have either of these advantages. When I go around villages I find that one of the most common complaints is corruption. People really hate corruption. Are you as a politician in French in this area Are you able to do anything about the corruption of the bureaucracy? I'm afraid corruption from top to bottom, politician, bureaucrat, engineer, you name it, it's it's there. And uh, but people are becoming quite reconciled. You know, they feel that you're going to pay in any case, so you may as well pay and get it done. Yeah, but then they they want somebody who'd accept money and do their work, not take the money and not do it. Which That's often sort happens. Of what happens often. <laughs> But isn't one of the problems ever and one of the reasons there's so much corruption that these officials and bureaucrats are so badly paid they can't possibly afford to live middle class lives on their salary it's not possible to do it that is absolutely true i mean our salary structure is so poor and the cost of living is rising that that's true but you know it starts from right on top and there's uh, in the last 20 years or so one seen this corruption rise to an extent that today it's become absolutely impossible One, the uh, one prime minister is corrupt pra- from prime ministers downwards the sikhs account for only 3% of the population of india but they are a prosperous and influential community they're also a martial race renowned for their fighting qualities in his politics amrinder singh is helped by his family's historic links with the last of the 10 gurus who founded the sikh religion in the 17th century Guru Gobind Singh valued his alliance with Amrinder's forefathers and bequeathed them some of his possessions. And, uh, yeah, and he is uh, as you see he's quite a small man because you know it's very difficult to get into grip then his his breastplate here. And what's this uh, here then? And this is Guru Gobind Singh which you know if Guru Gobind Singh used to uh, he didn't want to kill people but when he had to for instance the Mughal tyranny was on and he had to fight it. So what he did was on all, all his arrows is to put on uh, gold bands used to be put on it so that it paid for the funeral of the man he killed. Really? And this so this is one of Guru Sahib's arrows. And this is you see the gold uh, rings on it. Nobody likes to kill and he didn't want to do it either mm-hmm. but that was the ta- those were the times. I remember those long years I remember during the Sikh separatist movement here when you were trying to persuade young Sikhs that they should not support the separation of Punjab from India. Now the Punjab problem has quieted down but there are other separatist movements in other parts of India. But do you still think there is a danger that India might eventually break up? Absolutely. I I believe that if if the economy uh goes out of control, unemployment goes out of control, population is in any case out of control. Um already and then people tend to flock back to their to their roots and therefore you see regional movements gaining ground. Uh, it can happen at any time. But that would be a terrible tragedy wouldn't it? It would be. We want a strong country. We we wanting that all along. But unfortunately things are pointing the wrong direction. I'm um I'm I'm not an I'm not a pessimist at heart, but I see nothing to be optimistic about. India has an unblemished record of allowing Sikhs and other minorities to practice their own religions. Although there have been and still are Hindu fundamentalists who think India is too tolerant, its ancient tradition of accommodating all faiths remains intact. 
So there are some grounds for disagreeing with Amarinda Singh and for believing that India will remain at peace with itself. <laughs>